Donald, nice to talk to you. Hello, Greta. Donald, do you have any thoughts about uh, President Obama's remarks in the last couple of days about the Supreme Court and its consideration of the health care law, whether it's constitutional or not, specifically the mandate? Well, I think he paid great disrespect to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the Supreme Court for a reason. And it almost as, is as though he didn't care what they said and they shouldn't be making the decision. And this decision is above them and they don't exist. And I would think it would be very insulting to the Supreme Court what he said. Well, that may be insulting, but there is sort of the curious aspect. The Supreme Court, which, frankly, I don't think is the least bit intimidated by the president. They have a lifetime appointment. And remember, the president, uh, he doesn't have a lifetime appointment. In fact, his job is up for reconsideration in November. So I don't think they're intimidated. But I did think it was, it was even the Washington Post and others thought it was distressing that he was uh, perhaps suggesting to the Supreme Court trying to scare them to vote a different way, intimidate them, or maybe that he didn't know that they do have the authority to determine whether a statute's constitutional or not. Maybe he didn't know. Well, I don't know if he knew or not, but everyone tells me he studied constitutional law, and you would certainly think he would know something about this at the highest level. And frankly, you really start to wonder, don't you? It's really very sad. And I think it is very, no matter how you look at it, it is very, very disrespectful to the Supreme Court. Uh, these are brilliant people. I know some of them, and I just can't imagine they're going to like at all what happened. And it's very interesting, the judge's uh, decision yesterday, where he wants a three-page uh, memo as to what's going on, because it actually sounded like the president didn't understand the way our country's supposed to be working. And a lot of people are saying that. In fact, you sort of implied it last night on your show. But the way he discussed the Supreme Court, it was almost as though he didn't understand what was happening. Well, it's sort of interesting because I actually think that the the Court of Appeals, I think that they that got under their skin that the president made the remark before. And frankly, the Department of Justice lawyer said right in court before them that Marbury versus Madison was the authority. And that, of course, the court has the power and, to exercise uh, whether or not a statute is constitutional or not. They made that decision. I thought that the court was going a little bit beyond sort of trying to poke a stick in the president's eyes because of things he said the day before. I didn't think it really advanced this in any way, but created more trouble. Well, that may be right, but I think the justice was very insulted by what took place, and I think he was shocked by it, actually. And I think I could understand what he was saying and what he was doing, but I think he was very insulted. But the, the interesting thing, too, was then today, the Attorney General of the United States, he came out and he said, of course, uh, the court does have the power to consider whether a statute's constitutional or not. So he was essentially saying that, you know, maybe the president doesn't know it, but I'm telling you what the law is. That's what the law is. But then he said what the president said the day before was appropriate. Um, and, and I mean, it's, it's sort of curious. Like, I guess he's trying to have it both ways, trying not to run up against his boss, but trying to say that his boss was wrong. Well, I watched yesterday as the president tried to clarify what he said, but he didn't clarify it because it made no sense whatsoever. I mean, if you've listened to what he said and then the clarification, the clarification made no sense. It had nothing to do with what he said. So there's a mix up somehow. Somebody doesn't know what's going on, but it's very sad. And I think it's very disrespectful, even to the country, but certainly to the court. Well, the president says constantly that he believes that the statute is constitutional, that the mandate is constitutional. Yet, despite that, he seems to want to, you know, he seems to be trying to give the Supreme Court a hard time. And, and I don't have any doubt the Supreme Court's, you know, is immune from the pressure from outside. But if he's so certain it's constitutional, why is he pushing up against it so much and making those statements? Well, I can say this. If it passes, if for some reason the justices who are in many cases, the ones I know, I have just great respect for, if for some reason they allow it to pass, this country is in serious trouble. They will be doing a tremendous service to the country if they strike it down, because we, the country cannot afford it, and it's not going to be good health care. It's number but, Look, I want to see good health care for people. Number one, it's not going to be good health care. And number two, it is unaffordable by this country. It will put this country at such a disadvantage. So if it is stricken by the Supreme Court, they will have done a great service to this country. But the problem is, Donald, their job isn't to sort of make the far-reaching decision whether it's good for the country or not. That's they're true. supposed They're just supposed to look at the clause to see whether it's constitutional that's or not. That's true. If, if, whether it's good or not for the company, a country, that's for the president and the Congress and the voters come November. Well, that, that will be that's a side effect. What, but, Greta, that will be a side effect. I agree. They're not supposed to do it on that basis. They're going to see whether or not it is right and proper. But one of the big side effects, I mean, one of the truly great side effects will be the fact is, 
it will also be great for the country if they strike it down. You know, uh, I'm sort of curious why the president sort of started this war of words. Um, and of course, we've all seized upon it. Uh, I really don't. I think he knew that the Supreme Court has the power. I think that he made a deliberate calculation that, he, you know, that this was something good to say. And now he can't perhaps, you know, get himself out of it um, by what he said. What's your theory about why he has sort of picked this fight? Well, I really have no theory. I was amazed when I heard the statement. I mean, it's it's uh, almost like first grade stuff. And I was just absolutely shocked when I heard him make a statement that was against everything the country stands for. But more importantly, even intellectually, how could he make a statement so ridiculous? And I have no explanation for it. it it's some people would say not smart. Some people would say evil. I mean, there are lots of different reasons it could be, but I certainly would have no explanation. What he said was basic. It was as basic as one and one is two, and, and how he could have said it. And he said it so strongly. And then the next day, he tried to back up and clarify what he said, but he wasn't clarifying. He wasn't even addressing what he said. I mean, it, wasn't, it was obvious what he said. And then he clarified something that he didn't say. So nobody really knows, and perhaps he doesn't know either. All right, let me just switch the gears a little bit. Uh, everyone knows your success in television, so uh, let me turn to you on this particular question. There's been, there was sort of a duel yesterday on the morning show, um, Katie Couric on Good Morning America and Governor Sarah Palin on, today, on the Today Show. I'm curious uh, what you thought of that duel between them. Um, the numbers are out, and uh, Governor Palin's uh, with the Today Show beat Good Morning America, but nonetheless, what do you think of that little duel? Well, I know them both, and I think they're both terrific women. I think Sarah, who who doesn't do this for a living, in all fairness, I thought she was fantastic. I watched her, and Katie has done a great job, and this is really good in terms of because she's just great at what she does. So I really know them both, so I'm a little bit prejudiced for both, frankly, but I thought they really both did a great job. I think Sarah was fantastic, and I think Katie did. I watched Katie, and and I watched them both, and I thought they both did a really fantastic job. All right, let me go to a Titan in television. Uh, I think they were both winners, in other words. Okay, good, both winners. It's always good to have everybody win. All right, let me go to now one last question, too, about Oprah Winfrey, who have uh, enormous success in the TV business, but her network has been struggling. Um, do you have any advice or thoughts about why that network has been struggling? Well, she's just got to keep plugging. Oprah's a tremendous woman, and she's a friend of mine. And I did I was on one of her last few shows. She did her final wrap up week, and uh, it was uh, she was it was a great honor because she honored me and my kids and my family and everything else. And I just think Oprah's a tremendous woman. And you know, she didn't really need this. I don't really know why she did it. Maybe she wished she didn't because you know. It's it's tough with success. If you're successful like Oprah and you have just a little bit of a misstep, the press just goes after you like it's just unreal. So I think Oprah is going to do absolutely. She's a winner and she's going to do absolutely fine. And, you know, some people are saying she won't stay with it. She will stay with it. I think she'll probably stay with it and she'll probably make it successful. But, you know, this is just a blip for Oprah. And, and you know, they're making it such a big deal. She will do just fine. She's a really wonderful person. Donald, thank you. Nice, thank to, nice, to, nice to talk to you. Thank you very much, Greta.